In this video, we wanted to address the concerns of anyone considering backing any of our projects. I feel people should know who they're backing and their experience and why they should back them. Uh, I personally have been in business uh, for many, many years. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I've been an inventor since I can remember. And I've been inventing products uh, before these crowdfunding platforms even existed. I, I really wish they would have existed back when I first got started, but they do now, so I'm here to take advantage of that. Um, I'll give you a quick background of what we've done in the past, and then hopefully that'll give you a little bit of an idea of our experience and, and what we can do and, and delivering our promise. So as a potential backer, I feel you need to be confident in the ability of the inventor to deliver on their products and their promises. So basically one of my first products uh, was for the jet ski industry. Uh, we made finger throttles, we made traction pads. Uh, they, these were one of a kind pads actually. And we had a brace that went on the front of, at the time, which was a stand-up jet ski that was welded aluminum. And again, it was one of a kind. It came about because I couldn't find something that I wanted that I felt was good enough, so I created my own. And nothing has ever existed on the market like that then or now. So a lot of these products actually required special jigs. Uh, I had to have injection molds made. Um, a lot of these parts were made overseas in Taiwan and Malaysia. And others, uh, like the brace, was actually made here in the U.S. because I had to keep a lot closer tolerances on that for it to be made right. And um, so that was made here. Uh, we even were the first to create a lace-up neoprene booty for jet skiers. Now, nowadays, you see these booties all over the place, but back then, these didn't exist. And, and I have still my sample from that. So um, back then, we also didn't have the internet, uh, if you can imagine that. I had to take black and white film photos of all the products and place magazine ads to generate sales. <laughs> Those were the days, man. Now you can put up an entire catalog in minutes, basically for free, and no printing costs, no film, it's all digital. Well, you know, back then that didn't exist. So I had to make phone calls, drive around to dealers to show them our products and to get them to carry it. So that's how we built the business back then. It was actually pretty successful for many years and I did this basically just working in the summertime. I was kind of, I was younger then. I was footloose and fancy free. Um, then we made a Christian clothing line and we had to do a lot of the same things as before. We had um, to source all of the fabric. We had to create the designs. I actually did a lot of that. Um, I'm no artist, but I'm pretty good with a lot of computer stuff. So. We had to get the fabric printed in the rolls. Uh, we had to buy all the elastic. We, I designed the labels. It was actually called Righteous Wear. And we had to have the, the garments made, the patterns cut, all of that stuff. This too required lots of travel and time on the phone. Uh, that was pretty much, in my mind, a failure. Um, you know, Unless you count your mother still wearing the stuff to this day as a success, which she does. Um, I think we still have some of that old stuff to show in this video, so you'll, you'll see some of it. Anyway, um, I also had a rock climbing line for a while called Rock Sport. Uh, I designed that whole line, uh, the t-shirts and the little stickers and decals that we had. And one of our better sellers was actually called Crack Climber, which was a small guy scaling a plumber's butt crack. Uh, people really love that design. So we did that for a while, and that was, that was okay. Um, I also had a company making custom cases for paintball guns. Um, again, this was before paintballing got really big. And this was pretty successful for a while. And um, I still have a couple of those cases that I actually keep some of my, my real gun stuff in. So uh, that was another item. Again, had to source all of these projects. We had to source things and cost them out and do all this stuff. So now fast forward to the early internet days. And I have my biggest potential success ever if I only had better timing. The uh, reason I say that is because we had Blockbuster Video, other video rental stores, all signed on, loved the idea, and that this is right before DVDs were even being rented out. I mean, we're talking VHS tapes. This is, this is when this time frame was. Anyway, we called it Apartment Video Guide. I went to the, all the apartment owners in the uh, local Seattle market, and most of them told me the same thing. No one is going to want to look at apartments on the computer at home. Imagine that. I mean, th this is what they told me. So I was basically hitting brick walls and my timing couldn't have been worse. A and years later, that's the way everyone looks at everything on the internet. I mean, whether they're looking at apartments, homes, or whether they're shopping. So anyway, 
I still have copies of our original VHS demo tape as proof of our ingenuity and inventiveness. Um, and I actually foresaw the DVD market uh, becoming the future, and, and I pitched that, but unfortunately I pitched it to deaf ears. Now, I'm not saying I'm the only one that had this idea, but you know we did work on it way back before it started. So um, I also did a camera DSLR uh, flash bracket um, prototype that completely folded up really compact and had a ton of versatility. So. It was all aluminum, had these cool knurled knobs, um, looked pretty cool. And this was, again, back then, this is before very many people had digital cameras. So at that time, I kind of shelved the product thinking it didn't really have a lot of uh, potential. And looking back, I should have pursued it. But again, I was too early for the market. And nowadays, these types of products are everywhere. I mean, kids out on their skateboards have GoPro heroes and all these different types of cameras. Well, who would have known? I mean, I, I kick myself for not really pursuing that back then. Uh, I, I call them kids, but that's because I'm 50 years old now. So then I started a new business for my kids, creating cases for iPads and e-readers, the Kindles, the, uh, you know, all that stuff that came out. Uh, we called it the tech book. It's actually a pretty nice product. We still have the website up, although I'm not really pursuing that. I told them they kind of had to take over because I had other projects I had to do and, and focus on. But I had to create a lot of jigs for that to minimize uh, the assembly time. And, you know, so again, we had to think out a lot of things to, to really make these projects work. So uh, I'll put a link to that site and you can actually check it out. And, you know, if you want to order one, you can actually still get one. Um, my hardest creation to date has to be what we call Icon Do, and that was an app for the iPad. It required so much thought. Every function, every possible screen had to be designed and laid out, and yours truly is the one that did that. I knew nothing about software design. Uh, I don't think anything will ever compare to designing and bringing that app to market, uh, let alone the money I spent on that thing. And then to see it just sit and die because the software coders wanted more money to keep updating it. Every time Apple created an update, you know, it would create a bug in the app and it wouldn't work. Well, I mean, I may still revisit that and see about trying to re-release that app because it's still a one of a kind. Uh, still to this day, there's nothing like it. And um, I think it's really, really a cool, cool app. It came to me in a dream, actually. So... Um, it, it's for visual minded people, but you know, I think you'd like it anyway. So there's a lot more that I could go into. Uh, I, I could just go on and on, but the bottom line is my team and I have a vast and varied past full of experience bringing products and services to market. And I think this is what you need to look at. You know, if you invest, cause that's what you're doing in a project and you back something, you know, you want to make sure that you're working with, first of all, passionate creators and inventors, and then people that are able to put the other part of the equation together and actually deliver on those promises. And so you'll get your product to as close as to what you saw as possible. Um, some ideas that we have are completely new. Others have never been done before. And some are just greatly improved recreations. We call them reinventions. We're driven to create only things that are the best and made of the best materials possible. So we actually have 12 new projects in the works right now that I know people are going to love. I mean, I, I can hardly wait to get a couple of these out, but it takes time. So we'll roll those out in time. Uh, so I'd suggest that you email us to get on our pre-launch list. Uh, you'll receive special early adopters offers. Um, I'll put our email address down below and get on our list. I mean, we'll let you know when the next launches are coming because actually some of the projects may not get approved by Kickstarter. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way they work. And if they don't get approved, how are you ever going to know about it? I mean, we're still going to bring some of these to market, but I, I can guarantee you we're going to offer some special pricing. So anyway, check that out, get on our list, and hopefully this video has been informative and will make your uh, decision a lot easier to make uh, when it comes to deciding to back any of our projects. So thanks for watching this and um, back our projects. Thank you.